Can we implant the human brain into animals? From the earliest recollection of time, men have always desired to play God. From ancient men in biblical times who desired to build a tower right into heaven, to the weird Nazi science, man has always, without a shadow of a doubt, aspired to expand the frontiers of his knowledge. In this video, we'll bring you an interesting but quite bizarre scientific proposition. Try to imagine this scenario. You wake up one morning and your dog has prepared your perfect coffee. As you enjoy your coffee, your sheep walks in and tells you that your board meeting would commence in about five minutes and you need to be ready for it. As the meeting commences on Zoom, the participants are humans, cows, monkeys, and a couple of crocodiles. How is this even possible, you might say? In very simple terms, if the organ of intelligent, cognitive reasoning and emotional response is implanted in any beast, it might be safe to say that this is a theory to think upon. Of course, this is hard to imagine. It's almost laughable, to say the least. However, the science community doesn't consider this funny and just might be putting together one of the most sophisticated scientific experiments ever. And this is the implantation of the human brain into animals. For a while, the medical enclave has carried out some largely successful or temporarily successful surgical processes between men and animals, so this is not exactly the first time that a human-to-animal exchange is happening. For instance, in January this year, 2022, at the time of this video, Dr. Bartley Griffith, a Baltimore cardiac surgeon, carried out a heart transplant on a 57-year-old patient. What you may not be aware of, however, is that that donor was a pig. The procedure went well, and the patient was fine for a while. Unfortunately, he passed on after 60 days. There is, however, a high level of optimism among scientists that the human heart can serve more than one host. In a paper recently released by Dr. Chen Isaac, an assistant professor of neurosurgery, he proposed an ethical framework for brain organoids and their inherent potential. Organoids are the subject of this daunting experiment. Organoids, in simple terms, are stem cells that are taken from humans and then grown under controlled environments to mimic certain areas of the brain, like the cortex. The cortex is the section of the brain that is responsible for thinking, problem-solving, consciousness, and the like. In some cases, the harvested stem cells can be grown to mimic the whole brain. These stem cells eventually fuse and begin to act like real organs. They form organoids, which are usually very tiny. In most cases, they are the size of peas. These can be implanted into the brain of animals for research purposes. For instance, Dr. Chen and his team were able to implant organoids into the brain of a mouse in 2017. They found out that the human neuron from the organoid was able to effectively communicate with the mouse's neuron. This was attributed to the complex and multitasking nature of the human brain. Dr. Chen is, however, not the only one pushing this kind of scientific advancement. Dr. De Paula is an expert in the neurochimera field. This is a scientific advancement that focuses on blending human and animal tissues together. De Paula is confident that this is an option to be explored, as he and his team have presented viable reasons for this. This form of human-to-animal tissue blending has led to advanced studies of Alzheimer's disease and Down syndrome. In all of this, one of the most important questions to ask is this. Are these extreme advancements in science necessary? Or are they simply the manifestations of mental curiosity? How far do we go as the human race before all learning restraints are taken away? This no-holds-barred venture into medical science has a lot of regulators scratching their heads and asking what comes next after some of these extreme medical measures, and how far is medicine willing to fulfill Hippocrates' oath? We know you made a solemn vow to save all of humanity, even though this isn't technically possible, but oaths are just what they are. They suffice for as long as the conditions are favorable. Again, Hippocrates wasn't aware that you would be asking the human race to share its most prized gift with some rodents. 
There are also concerns as to what should be expected in the final results of these series of experiments. Is it possible that these organoids might eventually develop into fully functional brains in these animals, giving them human speech, emotions, levels of intelligence and comprehension? Also, what constitution or moral laws would these animals be subjected to if they eventually develop human abilities? Can we sue the pig? for the branch of a contract or should we just assume that it is in its nature to be careless? I mean, it wouldn't be fair to have double standards. What is good for the man should be good for the pig. Again, we must ask, how much time do we have before George Orwell's Animal Farm scenario plays out? A significant number of animals are physically stronger than men. A lot of them may have just been waiting to have an upgraded engine brains in this case, implanted into them. Do you really stand a chance against a young, ferocious lion? More so. The sting of racism still ravages our world. If men have not fully learned to live with other people because of the presence or absence of the melanin pigment, are we sure we would be comfortable drinking from the same water spout in schools or offices as the raccoon just drank from? Would you share an office space with a skunk? These and more are the questions that regulators and everyday people would love to get answers to. Of course, the science community would tell us that everything would eventually sort itself out. Or say it usually takes a little craziness to change the world. You might be told, but these are not easy questions to sweep under the rug. It is a great feeling to be at the center of groundbreaking medical innovation. All scientists must at some point feel some degree of superiority as they look over their scientific achievements. This must however be followed by this humbling knowledge. Our planet, Earth, exists as less than a speck of dust when we are compared with our galaxy, the Milky Way. The Milky Way also becomes a speck of dust when compared to the vast universe. We are still in the stone ages of the stone age when it comes to unraveling this vastness called the universe. Ouch, I know that hurts, but sometimes it might be better to go with the truth. Every avenue to eradicate our world of pain, diseases, and ailments is welcome, but we might never be able to shake off the feeling that something just isn't right when our neighbor, Ben and his dog, are intelligently planning on the strategies to take over the next Fortune 500 company. It also might be a great idea to know what representatives from the animal kingdom signed the treaty to have human foreign bodies implanted into them. Aren't we violating the rights of these animals to audaciously believe that they must love a piece of us in them? Whoever said that a porcupine was ever interested in sitting in an engineering class with a group of MIT students? Of course, all of these are possible or not so possible scenarios that could play out if, for any reason, organoids evolved to become fully developed with functional brains. For what it's worth, however, this is a long road and we may not be seeing some of the scenarios happen in our lifetime, if at all they ever do. Be assured that no draft would be asking for your hand in marriage anytime soon. Yeah, I mean the CEO of Tower Neck. This has been quite a deep wade into a mind-blowing and quite controversial idea. We, however, have no intentions of stopping anytime soon, as we will be looking at another brain distortion topic in our next video. Be sure to stick around for that video. Thank you for watching.